Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. Continuing our deep dive into the ThinkPad X220, which uh, seems to be getting a lot of popularity, so I thought I'd spend some time looking into some more uh, kind of tips and tricks with these units. We have two examples in front of us here. We have the uh, one I originally purchased, plus the one that you've seen in the recent videos on the right. And we can tell the difference between uh, these two because this one has 8 gigs of RAM and a slightly slower CPU. And this one has a slightly faster CPU and only 6 gigs of RAM. Uh, both of them are running the SSDs. And they're both running, on the surface, uh, the latest BIOS update from Lenovo, which is 1.4.3. And I will just zoom in on each of these screens here using my new tripod and you'll see that it's there. But I'll also take a look at the menu bar at the top. So again, this is uh, my original. We scroll over here. And the keen among you will notice a difference. Don't see it yet? It's the advanced menu. The advanced menu is not available with the stock version of uh, this system. You'll just see date and time, whereas over here you'll see advanced. So what does advanced get you? Well, it gives you pretty much unrestricted control uh, to your BIOS, among other things. So to give you a little bit of background, what the uh, kind of tweaked version of this BIOS uh, gives you uh, is it uncaps the RAM speeds as of version 1.29 and above, the RAM speed was limited to 1,333 megahertz. Regardless of what you put in it, it would not give you any more speed. That was it. You were capped. The BIOS version up until 1.28 allowed speeds up to 1866. So there is a bit of a performance boost using this uh, custom version of the BIOS. So not only does it unlock the faster RAM speeds, it also unlocks what's called the whitelist check and provides a whole bunch of other customization uh, goodies. Now, you might think to yourself, oh my goodness, you know, modifying my BIOS, that's, uh, that's pretty heavy. And you'd be right. However, I'm going to show you today how to do this. You will need to be running the latest version of the stock BIOS, like we do over here, 1.4.3. Uh, but other than that, it's actually a very simple process, and I'm going to walk you through uh, how we're going to do that on the unit that I have not done it to already. But as you can see, I haven't bricked this one, so we're good to go. So to do the BIOS flash, the most reliable way, and the way that most of the systems that are designed to do this uh, BIOS upgrade are in Windows, and this machine, of course, is not running Windows. Now, in a previous video, I showed you the installation of an mSATA drive, and a sharp person in the comments said, well, why wouldn't you just use a regular 2.5 inch drive, because the SATA lane on uh, that drive bay is faster than the mSATA. And he's absolutely right. Well, they are absolutely right. It is. However, if I need to do a quick swap into a different op operating system, all I need to do is, rather than having a dual boot setup explicitly on one drive, all I need to do is dump this hard drive in, tell it to boot from there, and I'm back into Windows. So it's a kind of a hacky little setup, but it works pretty good for me. So I'm going to flip this over, just that single screw, undo it, put it over there, take our hard drive. i got to remember the orientation, which is like so. Slide it in nice and snug, and I'm not transporting it, so I'm going to leave this piece off. So we're going to power it on. And once we're told to interrupt, hit the Think Vantage button, and we want to choose a temporary startup device, so we hit F12. The Intel boot agent is going to launch, and we want the Hitachi drive that we just shoved in there. And boom, we are loading into Windows. And if I remember right, it is Windows 7 on 
this drive. The really cool thing is you can have lots of drives set up for different operating systems and just hot swap them using the Intel boot utility. And it changes this unit into an incredibly versatile system, especially if you don't want to uh, mess around with things like uh, any kind of like virtual machine program, which nothing wrong with those, except their access to hardware is a bit dubious at best. So if you want full, full access to your machine, that's the best way to do it. And we're going to go to the x220mcdonaldtech.com website. If you want to know anything about <laughs> x220s, this is a, a phenomenally good website. It tells you how to install uh, Mac OS, Ubuntu, and it also has a resource section, which I highly recommend that you uh, review in detail because it gives you a whole lot of really cool mods, including IPS panels, Quad HD panels, uh, spare parts, all that good stuff. We want to scroll down to the whitelist remove advanced BIOS menu section. Click download here. It'll take you to a Mediafire link. Uh, don't let that uh, scare you. I can tell you that this is 100% safe. Now inside you have a README, which is very straightforward. I'll zoom in here, even though you'd be able to read it yourself, of course. So you need to make sure you're running the original 1.43 uh, BIOS update. Then you reboot the computer, open the command prompt, which I'll show you how to do in a second. Uh, cmd.exe as administrator, navigate to the modified BIOS folder, run the flash bat. And you pretty much follow the steps. It's really simple. So this computer's already had 1.43 installed, so we're gonna go right for the modified uh, BIOS folder. And we are gonna launch the uh, flash bat, but to do that, of course, I'm getting ahead of myself, I need to extract it. So we'll extract the desktop, open that up, go down to where it says flash, double click, run. It's going to say, do you really want it to do things to the computer? And then you're gonna get a message. The current BIOS will be replaced by another one. Choosing the wrong one will blow up the world. And we're okay with that. So the screen's gonna flicker a whole bunch of times and then the computer is going to shut down. And then you'll see it start up. We're gonna interrupt. All right, so now we wanna go into F1, see our BIOS utility. And there we go, we have our advanced menu. It is literally that easy, ladies and gentlemen. So inside this advanced menu, you can take complete control of your computer. You can set a boot configuration. You can see a processor configuration, hard disk, memory, pretty much anything that you want to tweak, you can do in here. Obviously, the extra control means that you need to be a little extra careful in what settings you're messing around with. But essentially, your computer outside of Libre Boot, which I don't think is ready for this machine yet, is uh, unlocked. So you can access all of the uh, menus that Lenovo locked you out of. You can get faster RAM uh, actually being uh, understood by the computer properly, not being throttled. And it's just one more five minute tweak that you can make uh, to keep this computer running and competing uh, with some of the best that are out there. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed this content and found this useful. Any links that you will require to do anything you've seen in the video will be included in the description below. And again, highly encourage you to check out that X220 website. Tons and tons of good resources there. And we shall see you next time.